God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord God has made, and we shall choose and rejoice and be exceedingly glad. On behalf of my wife, Lady Tiaja Johnson, and the entire Connections Community Church, we would like to welcome you into our virtual atmosphere on this Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but it's been a hellacious week. I'm so glad to be in the house of God. Listen, we just want to make sure that you have some information that you will know what's happening in the life of our church. On this coming Tuesday, meet us here at 1030 a.m. for our bi-weekly distribution with Feeding Tampa Bay. Each time we partner with Feeding Tampa Bay, we receive between 5,000 and 10,000 pounds of food. That means that we're able to bless more than 150 to sometimes 250 households every time we have our feeding distribution. So that's this Tuesday at 1030 a.m. Then on Sunday, meet us back here in Lake Wales at 9.30 a.m. as we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is the birthday of the church and with the Spirit of God descended upon the people of God in the house of God. And so this is the day that we recognize that God has given us his precious spirit that he lives in us. On this day of Pentecost, join us here for a park and praise worship celebration, 9.30 a.m., Pull up your car, listen to wonderful praise and worship, amazing music, and an on-time word from God. That's this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Govern yourselves accordingly, but now let's get ready for the word of God. This is the day that the Lord God has made. We shall choose to rejoice and be glad. We're so grateful that you are joining us on this Sunday morning. We believe that the Lord has a word for you. We can begin to share this video and let someone know that Connections is on live now. Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. And the scripture lesson will begin with verse 4. There's a statement that says God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But I like saying that his word is good all the time, and all the time his word is good. We camped around Ezekiel 37 last Sunday, and we would like to con continue where the Lord had us in the word of God on last week. Ezekiel chapter 37, the scripture lesson will begin with verse 4, and it reads in, these, in this way. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say dry bones listen to the word of the Lord verse 5 this is what the sovereign Lord says look I am going to put breath in you and make you live again as you're listening to me let me read verse 5 again this is what the sovereign Lord says look I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for your word. Your word is anointed. Your word is authoritative. Your word is active for our lives. We ask now, God, that you forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, anything that may be prevailing in our life that is displeasing to you, would you remove it now in the name of Jesus? God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. As the word of God goes forward, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that someone will grab what you're saying to them. I pray, God, that you will unstop deaf ears and, God, you will open our eyes to where we can see and hear what thus saith the Lord. Now, God, we thank you for you are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and shape us, have thine own way. For we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? We're wanting you more and more each day. Show us your perfect way. Now, God, sit upon us. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. The word of God says once again in verse 4, Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. 
I want to teach and preach with this thought in mind. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Would you lay your hands on yourself and declare it's about to happen? My brothers and sisters, it is important for you and I to understand that it is the very nature of God to speak. The God in whom we serve, the creator of the universe, he is a speaking God. He is a communicative God. His very nature has formed for us to glean into one of his strongest attributes. It is to be understood that an attribute describes a specific personality trait. It is also prudent to distinguish that each one of the traits of God are all encompassing and they are innumerable. There is no way that one could ever start to number the traits of God. The descriptors of his traits expound on the inexhaustible character of who God is. Inexhaustible is a word to describe limitless and non-ending. And all of God's traits are inexhaustible, but we must highlight that he is a loving God. It is important for us to highlight that he is a benevolent God. He is a merciful God. He is a gracious God. He is a faithful God. He is a healing God. He is a forgiving God. And he is a prayer answering God. But beyond his loving kindness, beyond his benevolence, beyond his tender mercies, beyond his grace, beyond his faithfulness, and beyond his forgiving, we must understand that above all, he is a speaking God. He speaks and he communes with his creation. He has koinonia with us. And the mere fact that God is a speaking God gives strict validity and variance to the transcendence of God. Transcendence refers to the aspect of God's nature and power that is wholly independent of material things of this universe and it defies all physical laws. Transcendency of God is the indication that God has the ability to function beyond what he has created. Let me say that again. The transcendency of God is the indication that God has the ability to function beyond what he has created. Because what he has created cannot speak back to, nor create at the same level of creation in which he, the creator, has created Mankind, my brothers and sisters, has attempted and is still attempting to replicate life, but has been highly unsuccessful in mastering the creative reduplication and redemptive process of God. And these unsuccessful attempts are because those that have been created with life cannot manipulate and give life to what they did not and cannot reproduce. Let me say that again. These unsuccessful attempts are because those that have been created with the life of God cannot manipulate and give life to what they did not and what they cannot reproduce. And this is the primary reason why you should not put your faith in man. Let me say that again. This is the primary reason why you should not put your faith in man. Because man, he's flawed just like you and I. And only God can do what you need done. Simply stating that you and I cannot speak life without the creator. You and I, my brothers and sisters, cannot function without the creator. Because his speaking is the mere existence of his existence. And his speaking has brought everything that we see into existence. Let me say that again. His speaking is the mere existence of his existence and his speaking has brought everything into existence. Not only is he a speaking God and his speaking has brought everything that we see into existence but it has also brought everything that we cannot see into existence as well. 
This is important for you and I to understand and to know that unless God speaks, nothing can happen. Unless God speaks, nothing can form. And unless God speaks, nothing can function. Allow me to say that again in this teaching moment. Unless God speaks, nothing can happen. Nothing can form and nothing can function. The New Testament author of Acts, the 17th chapter and the 28th verse verifies our argument by saying in him we live in him we move and in him we have our being simply saying that I am and you are because God is and because God is I am and we are let me say that again that went too fast for you I am and you are because God is and because God is I am and we are I exist because I have been spoken into. You exist because you have been spoken into. I am who I am by the grace of God. And for this matter, there is nothing that I can do to deserve the love of God. There is nothing that I can do to deserve the grace of God. There is nothing that I can do to deserve the mercy of God. But because of his love, he loves me. Because of his grace, I'm a recipient of the grace of God. Because of his tender mercy, Mercy. I have been shown mercy. And can I ask you the question this morning? Aren't you glad that God is God? Hey, let me say that again. Aren't you glad that God is God? Because if it was not for God being God, your enemies would have overtaken you by now. If it wasn't for God, you would have lost your mind a long time ago. If it wasn't for God, you would have lost everything because of COVID-19. But because he is who he is, you are who you are. And once you understand the strength of who God is, it is only then that you can know who you are in God. And once you understand and know who you are in God, then you're able to declare with pride and dignity your spiritual value and your self-worth. And this alone should be reassuring to your soul because you are a part of what God has spoken into being. You are a part of the creative process of God. And the reason why so many people operate with a defeated mentality, a destroyed mind, and a dogmatic memory is because they don't know the cause of their creation. And when you realize that your mere creation was a process that could not be duplicated, that alone should forge a sense of humility on the inside of you. Because when you are in touch with your creator, your mindset begins to change. When you're in touch with your creator, the way that you see life begins to change. Ah, my brothers and sisters, the prophet Moses and the composer of the majority of the creation account in Genesis points us vividly into the mind of God as he speaks and as he forms and as he gives direction to what it is he's speaking to. Now understand that everything that God has spoken to, everything that God has formed, and everything that God has given direction to has been counterattacked by the very creation that God has created himself. Pastor, help me understand, but you have to understand that Yahweh's voice has called everything into existence. He spoke into nothing and everything was made. He spoke into barrenness and barrenness gave birth. He spoke into darkness and darkness turned into light. And can I tell you that God works his best in darkness and in death. Let me say that again. God works his best in darkness as well as in death. Because the only thing that will bring illumination in darkness and resurrection in death is the very voice of God. Did you hear what I just said? And some of you are going through life and it seems as if God has been silent and you don't hear him but you have to get to a place in your life and say God I want nothing else but to hear a sound that comes from heaven when I'm going through my dark seasons I can't listen to everyone and everything because no matter how dark life is 
when God speaks, something must happen. No matter how dismal life is, when God speaks, something must be created. And not only will some things happen when God speaks, but some things must happen. And please understand that God didn't create you to live in defeat. God did not create you to live in sickness. God did not create you to live in misery, but God created you so that you would know that he is God and besides him there is none other. And because he is God, I channel the spirit of my grandmother and she said it like this. He's bread when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's shelter in the time of the storm. He's a bridge over troubled water. I dare you to lay your hands on yourself and say he is God. And sometimes you have to remind yourself of the creative and the speaking God that he is. That no matter what I go through, no matter what I see, no matter what I face, I can stand on the word of God and declare he is God. And because he is God, it is this sentimentation that brings us into the text this morning. Ezekiel is in a continual conversation with God as it wraps us into verse 4. This continual conversation between Ezekiel and God continues and the word of God says, Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of God. Let's plow through the text for a moment. Watch the language here of this pericope. Ezekiel said, then he said to me, then he said to me, then he said to me, me is a personal pronoun that denotes ownership. Then he said to me, but who is the he that is talking to the him? Then he said to me, Ezekiel is recognizing the strength of the he that is talking to him. He's talking to God and God is talking to him. He's talking to God and God is talking to him. Ezekiel is now ministering to the people of God during some of the darkest days of Judah's history. Ezekiel, understand my brothers and sisters, he is a priest. But not only is Ezekiel a priest from the lineage of Aaron, but he's also a prophet and his prophetic mantle has afforded him the opportunity to be one who is familiar with hearing from God and speaking to God and at this time of our text the children of Israel are in slavery this is the second time that they have been enslaved. The first time that they were enslaved, it was to the Egyptians, and now they are being enslaved to the Babylonians. And the book of Daniel gives more information about how this enslavement began. King Nebuchadnezzar raided Judah and captured all of the people of God. He raided the temple of God and took all of the items from the treasury, and he also took Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And during this period of those 70 years in captivity, God raised up a prophet and a priest by the name of Ezekiel and the prophet and the priest. He raised them up to speak to the people who feel as if they've been abandoned by God. Please hear this. He raises up one that he can speak to and can speak to him that will tell the people that feel abandoned by God. The people feel abandoned by God, but Ezekiel says, then God said to me, the people feel lost from God, but Ezekiel says, then God said to me, the people feel as if all hope has long, has been lost and gone, but he says, then God spoke, spoke to me. Beloved, I want to tell you that you can never allow what you see to dictate what you've heard. Ah, let me say that again, my brothers and sisters, you can never allow what you see to dictate what you have heard, because what you see in the natural is not all is a great representative of what you have heard in the supernatural and the God that is talking to him is the same God that said to Abraham that I am Jehovah Jireh. The same God that is speaking to Ezekiel is the same God that told Moses that he's Jehovah Nissi. The same God that is talking to him is the same God that told David that I am Jehovah Roha. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's the same God. He's the same God that spoke to Gideon that told him that he's Jehovah Shalom. 
And so Ezekiel says, it is this God that is talking to me. It is this God that is talking to me. It is this God that said, let there be and there was that is talking to me. He's the same God. And because he's the same yesterday, today and forever, he's not archaic. Uh, because he's the same God, he's not aloof somewhere, but he's the same God. And I need to remind you that he's the same God. Sometimes you need to lay your hands on yourself and remind yourself that he's the same God. When you see your bills are mounting up, you better look at him and say, he's the same God. When you're sick in your body, you better lay your hands on your body and say he's the same God. When your finances are being debilitated and depleted, you better look at your money and your bank account and say he's the same God. Right where you are, just begin to shout that he's the same God. He's the same God because he still speaks. He's the same God because he still heals. He's the same God because he still delivers. Watch this. You can testify that he may not come when you want him to come. But because he's the same God, he will always be on time. Uh, my brothers and sisters, that's a place for you to shout right where you are because you understand that your timing is not predicated on what God has spoken. And what God has spoken supersedes your timing. That just because your timing is come to an expiration doesn't mean that it has expired on the time of God. And that's why you have to stand back and say, God, I'm going to trust you because I believe what I've heard. Watch this. What did God say to him? God says, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Now watch this as we walk through it. God told him what to speak. The reason why, let me tell you, that God could trust him on what he should say to the people is because he knew that he had prepared Ezekiel for this moment. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that some of the stuff that God has been speaking to you about is only for you because others cannot handle what you've been hearing. And that's the reason why people think you're crazy because your faith is the way that it is, but they cannot handle what you have been hearing. Because if you tell some people what you've been hearing from God in prayer, they will think that you're crazy and that's the reason why you're catching hell right now because everybody hasn't lived in your favor that's the reason why you're going through hell because everybody cannot handle your captivity everybody cannot handle your suffering and so since everybody cannot handle your agony everybody cannot handle your anointing and because everybody cannot handle your agony they can't carry your anointing and they surely cannot carry your assignment. Uh, my brothers and sisters, God says, I need you to speak to them because you're in the same slavery uh, that they are in, but you haven't stopped speaking to me. Uh, please watch what God is saying to him. He said, Ezekiel, you're in slavery just like everybody else, but you've still been speaking to me. Can I tell you that you've been going through something, but God says because you've never stopped communicating with him, he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive and while everybody else is going crazy and losing their mind you better stand on the promises of God and say no matter what I see I know what I've heard and because I heard God I know that God is going to make a way because I heard God I know that God is going to turn it around because I heard God I know that God is going to step in right on time because I heard God I heard God watch this he says Speak to the dry bones. Watch this. The dry bones are symbolic to represent the people of Israel and the desolation of their current situation because they're in a dry place. You've been there. They're in a dry place when it seems as if there is no life moisture around you. And there is no way for you to have the resuscitation that you need to meander through the problems that you have. 
Uh, they're in a dry place. Uh, they're in captivity. They're in bondage. They have no spiritual life. They are stuck in their Babylon wanting to die. Have you ever been there, my brothers and sisters, when you've been in a position to where you've had so many things going wrong and nothing was going right and you said, God, what am I doing wrong? That how did I stay in this position that I feel as if I should have been delivered from? Uh, but what's interesting Interesting in the text is who God speaks to. He's speaking to every Israelite. He's speaking to Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is an Israelite, and he too is living in slavery. He puts Ezekiel in this place to understand what everybody else is going through. Ezekiel is in bondage. He's in captivity. He's going through slavery. He's going through bondage. But even though he's living in captivity, God says, I can still trust you to speak life into yourself. Did you hear what I just said? Because even though you may be in captivity and spiritual slavery, God says I need to be able to trust you that while you're going through hell, you can still give me a hallelujah. And this lets me know that you can be in your own slavery and God will use you to speak to yourself from destroying yourself. You can be in your own slavery and God will use you to speak to yourself from destroying yourself. And I need to tell you, you better learn how to speak to yourself. How God says, speak to these dry bones. How I used to hear that persons that talked to themselves were crazy and insane. But sometimes you have to talk to yourself so that you won't go crazy. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to begin to look at yourself and tell yourself that you're the head and not the tail. You better tell yourself that you are rich and wealthy. You better tell yourself that you're healed from all of your sin sickness. Diseases. You better tell yourself that you are lovable and that your husband is on the way. You better tell yourself that God is going to bring comfort from all of the pain and the agony that you've been through. You better learn how to speak to yourself. So God says, speak to these dry bones. And the dry bones are representative of the children of Israel and their captivity. The dry bones are every, is everything that's in your life that has no movement that has no plausible cause, that is not functioning properly in your life. God says, I need you to speak to every dysfunctional thing and let them know that it's time to live again. Now, watch this, watch this here, my brothers and sisters. When you learn how to talk to yourself, God will use you to talk yourself from out of officiating your own funeral. Please understand, when you learn how to talk to yourself, God will use you from being your own pallbearers. When you learn how to talk to yourself from death, then there's certain things that you must say to yourself and the text says that God spoke to him and told him to prophesy. Prophesy means to speak into existence what you don't see in the natural but you see in the supernatural and you better learn how to prophesy he said prophesy I'm not talking about a new house I'm not talking about a new car I'm not talking about a new job but prophesy that you're coming out of this prophesy that is getting ready to happen and he says to the dry bones and when he prophesies to the dry bones, he said, don't just tell them anything. But when you speak to them, give them what thus saith the Lord. And what does God say to the bones? He says, something is getting ready to happen now. My brothers and sisters, we've arrived to our landing trip. That's a place for you to lay your hands on yourself and say, it's about to happen. What did God say? You're moving from death to life. What did God say? I never leave you nor forsake you. What did God say? I'm about to to the time of the battle. What did God say? I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. What did God say? You are the head and not the tail. What did God say? You shall live and you shall not die. Right where you are, lift your hands and say, I shall live because something is getting ready to happen. Watch this. I'm done. God says, look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. That means that there is still something there that is not ready for expiration and death. But there is something there that's a prime candidate for deliverance. He says, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. And watch this. This is God's ruach breath. 
In the Hebrew, uh, ruach is synonymous with the presence of God. God says that once he puts breath into you, you will live again. And this is indication that you cannot stay dead. So this means that where you are now is not your final place. And you have to learn how to lay your hands on yourself and say, live again. Would you begin to speak those words to yourself and say, live again. Would you lay your hands on yourself and say, live again. Uh, that's a great time for you to give God praise because you understand that God has some great things in store for you. That's a great place for you to open your mouth and thank God that you shall live and you shall not die. I gotta get out of here. I recently saw a movie by the name of The Upside. And in the movie The Upside, the main characters are that start in the movie is Kevin Hart and Brian and Christen. Tells the true story of an ex con by the name of Dale Scott and the paralyzed billionaire named Philip LaCase. And in the real world, these two would never be free. But at the moment of Philip's life, he put his life into the hands of Dale. And one day, friends came and said do you know who Dale is and Dale was the man played by Kevin Hart and he said what do you mean he said did you know that Dale is a felon and Philip said to his rich friend yes I know that he has a record but he also said to him and the Lord says to you in his presence. Did you hear what I said? God says that I know about your past, but I'm more interested in your present. And I tell you that God wants you to live because he's creating your present moment. So the Bible says you shall
enlarge my territory. Turn things around. Shake me up now. That I may be who you want me to be. God, I give you praise. Speak to your people in the name of Jesus. I do pray. Amen. If you're listening to me and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't turn off of this live broadcast without accepting Jesus into your life. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing you have to say, God, is forgive me of my sins, those things that you've done wrong, knowingly or unknowingly. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died, that I may have everlasting life. And because you died, that I may live, I receive your son, Jesus Christ. And I know that I am saved. God, not only save me, but fill me with the Holy Spirit. Live on the inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. Thank you so much for all of you who listen to us and watch us week after week. All of you who continue to give to this ministry for your sowing into the ground. Our church is in a healthy season because of your generosity. With all of the changing effects in the world, thank you Connections for not forgetting your church. Right now, why don't you prepare your heart and your mind to give your time and sow your seed. The information is on the screen. Why don't you text to give, use Givelify, or our church, uh, our church app, or our church website. There's so many ways for you to give. But know this, the more you give, God gives back to you. Thank you so much for your generous blessings as we continue the work of the Lord. We look forward to seeing you in our online community on Tuesday night. Enjoy your holiday, and we cannot wait to be a part of your presence again. Remember this, you will win in every area of your life.